from snow to dust and the longest, toughest event in the calendar, Kenya's Safari Rally. Africa, La Continent, and the wonderful people, the roads, incredible. You've never seen such rough, dusty, smooth roads in the whole of this world. And that's where the Safari Rally comes and takes place, and that's where we're going to be competing. His local knowledge helped Ian Duncan lead the rally after the first competitive section. That section, though, also saw the first problem. Kenneth Erickson hit a rock and lurched through the stage like a crab. And it was a big stone, or two big stones, on the road, probably from Carlos. And I had to go over one of them, which one, and I took the right one, and, and it took the one of the lower arm or the hub, so it, it knocked the, the bolt out from the hub, you see, so I lost the wheel there. Kenneth and Stefan Pamanda had done their part in just getting to the service area. It was now the mechanic's turn, but it was no good. They were out. Sykes was another driver who also hit problems on that first section. Tell me the animals, please. Tell me the animals. That collision with an animal, possibly a gazelle, had taken a wheel off. Carlos, está apretado. Si no funciona la pistola, la apreté, la reapreté. Todo lo que pude y más. Todo lo que pude y más, porque le di más retoque. Helicopter, uh, we lost the wheel. The wheel nuts are broken, so we cannot continue. That's the end of the rally for us. Sainz, like Ericsson, began his long journey home. Mackinnon had lost a little time on the first section, but made up for it on the second and took the lead. On the third section, though, Schwartz caught Mackinnon and led an event for the first time this year. Colin McRae hasn't much experience of the safari. He was playing a waiting game. Mackinnon's teammate on his first rally of the year was Richard Burns. 50. Fast left. 50. Tom K right on bump. Ian Duncan had backed off after that first section. He was third last year in the same car and was hoping for better in 97. A string of problems meant that Mackinnon and Seppo Haryana weren't happy men. We had just punked uh, two, three kilometers before the end, and that's all. I think it's quite important to go quite slowly, because uh, still it's a long way to go. As the first day drew to a close, McRae was relieved to be in third place. Burns was second, although the day wasn't without its problems for him. He started this section without a clutch. Happily, he reached service, and the clutch was changed. Schwartz, though, led the rally at the end of leg one. Uh, quite a good day. I mean, we didn't have any problems today. The car was working very, very well. Apart from one shock observer, everything was perfect. Day two. Schwartz began the day in the lead, but problems weren't far away. After uh, 60 kilometers, we had a shock observer broken on the rear, which pulled out in one go, and then they almost the wheel fall off, so we have to stop and have to change it. Mackinnon too had his fair share of problems, a string of punctures costing time. Eventually, mechanical damage caused by those punctures meant retirement. Colin McRae had a great morning and had grabbed the lead, but on the third section of the day, he and Nicky Grist had a heart-stopping moment. The collision with that wall of stones had caused quite bad damage to the front of the car. I thought it was just finished. I mean, the car was right up in the air and I thought it would have taken the whole front off. Luckily, it damaged one corner very badly. And the front of this car is not too bad. 
For Richard Burns, dust was the problem. He was forced to a standstill several times on the second section. Duncan, meanwhile, was waiting for the pair ahead to break something. On a day of bizarre incidents, again, it was Schwartz's turn. Take your shoe belt out. What do you want? Take your shoe belt out. Take it out. Uh, we have broken the, the throttle uh, cable, and Armin has a very good idea. He borrowed my uh, shoes, and uh, now it's working. But we, we did 30 kilometers like that on the stage, so not the best way to do it. His steady, cautious drive meant that Ian Duncan was third at the end of the day, the car perhaps feeling its age. What are they working on now? Um, changing everything, I hope. <laughs> we need a new car. <laughs> Burns had been fastest on the day's last section. He was second, using helpful advice from his helicopter at times. 50 in middle, Richard. Flat right, slow, keep middle. McRae, though, could breathe a sigh of relief. Despite the collision with the wall, he led the rally. I think the lead's probably about six minutes now, so six minutes in safari is probably six seconds in any other event. So it's not an awful lot. We still need to be very careful. And so to the third and final day. Colin McRae started it running first on the road. Fast bump. Straight, 8.50. Colin and Nicky Grist must have thought they'd used up all their bad luck on day two. Wrong. I mean, we're lucky to be here, really. After about 85, 86 kilometres into the section, the alternator failed. Then we had to pull the fans out, then the engine started to run hot, and then it started misfiring, then we had to put the fan in, and then we had to do something else, and then the suspension went. French privateer Frederick Dorr would finish in sixth place. But the highest placed privately run car was the Toyota of Jonathan Toroitic, fifth. Schwartz came home fourth, despite all the scares. But exactly the same as last year, third place was Ian Duncan's reward. Medium right over brow, to long bad right. Richard Burns and Robert Reed finished second, a brilliant result, and one he and the team were delighted with. Uh, it's the, my best result in a World Championship, in a full World Championship rally, and um, two British drivers, first and second, so I'm very happy. That allowed the new team of Colin McRae and Nicky Grist to taste victory for the first time. And into two left. To the applause of their mechanics, they'd taken Subaru's third victory of the year. Relieved that it's all over. It's a, a long event, this. And the last days just seem to go on and on forever. So I'm happy that it's all over. It looked to be a Subaru domination. Three wins from three starts. Seven minutes the gap between first and second, with Duncan, Schwartz, Toroitich, and Dor rounding off the top six. There was now also a new leader in the Manufacturers' Championship after that third round. Colin McRae had just a one point lead over Sainz, with Liati and Ericsson tied for third place. No change, though, in the manufacturer's leaderboard. Subaru still led.